Brown University in the Physics Department. He specializes in studying astrophysics and cosmology. He's been looking for dark matter for 18 years, um, and apparently you brought some tonight? Yes. <laughs> it's in my back pocket. It's in yours as well. Yeah. <laughs> Previously being, previous to being at Brown, he was at uh, Oxford University in England, and also uh, was at Berkeley. And uh, last night you told me he was with our friend Alan Guth, who was here some months ago, if you remember. So, um, I guess we'll find out all about, we're going to be uh, looking directly for dark matter tonight. <laughs> and that should be an interesting subject because uh, it's always something that we uh, hear about a little bit but never really know too much about, so it's good to uh, hopefully be enlightened a little bit more about that. So with that, please help me welcome uh, Rick Gates. Thank you. Uh, uh, a, a, a solution, if you like, to our current uh, sort of challenges in particle physics, in that our standard model of particle physics, as we call it, is clearly an incomplete theory. And we, uh, we have um, uh, an idea about how the standard model should be modified, or, or indeed, you know, what a sort of super theory should look like that would explain the standard model, but would also provide, should we say, more beauty or more symmetry to particle physics. Uh, and that one of the very natural things that comes out of uh, 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 such a super theory is, is in fact uh, particles which would be the dominant matter in the universe would be the dark matter. So, so that and this, this um, dual role of the dark matter really came to light uh, in the 80s, the 1980s. The original dark matter problem in the 30s uh, uh, through cosmological, uh, I think many of you will probably have heard of uh, Fritz Zwicky and um, his observations of the, uh, uh, of the coma uh, cluster which, which made him realize that there must be uh, uh, a lot more matter than as it were literally met the eye. The, the luminous matter was not enough in order to hold this cluster together. So um, that's one of the things and then what I'm going to do is, is talk a little bit about, well there are, uh, we talk in the jargon, there are a couple of ways of looking for particle dark matter. Um, there's looking for it directly, if you like, which is what I'm going to describe in detail, uh, something I've spent the last 18 years trying to do, which is literally to, to, to build a detector which is big enough and sensitive enough to directly see the occasional interaction of dark matter particles as they move through it. Uh, but there's also what we sometimes refer to as indirect uh, uh, detection, if you like, or uh, if it's, it, and, and the idea there is that uh, we would either look for the byproducts or the decay products of dark matter particles in, the, in, in our own galaxy or in extragalactically, uh, or we'd literally produce the stuff in the laboratory. So, so we, we, rather than actually sort of detecting the dark matter or seeing a trace of it, what we'd simply do is say, hey, we've managed to make some in the lab, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what that means. And, um, uh, so, uh, and then, I, well, I'm going to be a little bit biased, but I, I'm going to show you just one or two of the techniques that are most, if you like, competitive at honing in on this, uh, uh, on this problem. They, they happen to be a couple that I'm, uh, that I'm following. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then... Uh, oh, the last thing, sorry, I did want to mention, because it was really thanks to so many of you as taxpayers, uh, was just to give you an idea of what we're doing here in the U.S. and that there is a brand new underground laboratory that is uh, currently sort of coming down the, the pipeline, and I'll show you just one or two uh, schematics of, of, of what the intention is. So I, I just thought I'd put a few uh, photographs up and see whether you can spot the theme here. Um, it's... Uh, Okay, so anybody, the, the theme there was all of those photographs were taken anything from half a mile to a mile underground. Um, ah, ah, obviously, yes. So I am an astronomer, if you like, uh, but I do my work uh, deep underground. Uh, these dark matter detectors I'm going to show you are um, um, uh, the one that I was working on, say, 10, 12 years ago, was located in Minnesota in an old iron mine uh, there. Uh, in the last sort of four, year, four or five years ago, up until the last two years ago, this was me doing physics Italian style, where, as you can see, as a physicist, you have to change your clothing and become altogether more flamboyant. Um, but this is actually, a, this is a sort of 
well, sort of for those of you who would like James Bond movies, this is actually a bit like one of those sort of large bunkers that the bad, the bad guys seem to frequent. This is this 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 hall is about 100 meters or 100 yards long, 25 meters uh, high, uh, and is and is about three quarters of a mile underground. And in fact, it's not just one of these, but three of them. How did it get built? Uh, 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 well, the way everything gets built in Italy, the, uh, the the Minister for Transport happened to own the company that was excavating a tunnel <laughs> through the Apennine Mountains, and he said... Uh, he, uh, How'd you uh, like an alcove well, off to the side? A physicist, very much, the Italians respect their physicists, it's terrific. Yeah. Uh, Chapel Zucchichi, who was a, who's a Nobel laureate, uh, said, look, I think the way physics is going, we need underground laboratories, and of course the Minister for Transport was only too pleased to see another, you know, uh, couple of million tons of rock. Uh, taken out of the mountain by his company, by his company. <laughs> yeah. but it was. I mean, it was. It, it's so typical. You know, you know, Italy really got ahead of the game on this one. This one was put up in the early eighties. We, unfortunately, in the U.S. It's taken us really till till about now to figure uh, uh, that this is the right thing to do. And in, the, in the, during that time, at least two uh, Nobel prizes have been won uh, doing science in these underground laboratories that actually, rightfully, you know, should really have been one here in the US but wasn't because we've been a little bit slow on the uptake. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a new interesting frontier of, of science. And th this is actually the, uh, the, the latest lab, uh, which is in Homestake. Uh, mine, for those of you, anybody who's seen Dead Wood on HBO, uh, that's actually the Homestake uh, gold mine. It's the, it's the uh, single largest There's gold mine in the US. There's 45 inches of snow over it now. Oh, that storm dumped 45. <laughs> yeah. It's still snowing? It's still snowing. I did, I did notice there was a storm went through. Uh, <laughs> yes. Is it really 45 inches there? Well, that's what I heard. Cool. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Uh, wow. Cancels your trip for tomorrow. Right? <laughs> well, next week, actually. <laughs> I, I guess let's hope it's uh, it's uh, not pouring too quickly. Yeah, we'll 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 so, out. so let me see. Uh, at this point, I, I wanted to just make a few key points, which is one, I, I'm, I'm going to, like any good scientist, declare my ignorance. Uh, the second one is to uh, demonstrate why an astronomer can do his best work one mile <laughs> underground, and then lastly, um, I hope explain why it's worth paying attention during this lecture. <laughs> so, you know, if, you know, we go back four or five hundred years, right, we pretty much thought we had the universe stitched up, we, you know, earth, fire, air, water, sorry, earth, fire, and water, um, uh, you know, we had crystal spheres, right, we, we really had the composition nailed. Uh, the embarrassing thing is I stand before you today professing my ignorance because, you know, we're not doing a terribly good job as astronomers or cosmologists.